Do you think that if you and Rohan had actually advanced to latter stages of the Olympics, uh, then this actually would come? Do you think that the AIA would have taken this step if you had done a bit better at the Olympics? No, I don't think they would have been able to. I don't think you know the country would have allowed them to. But you know, sad to say that uh, you know a lot of people probably celebrated on the day we lost. Uh, Mahesh, uh, while you spoke to Kanjana on Monday, you said that it was a personal vendetta. Uh, do you think it has been done to please certain people by certain people involved in Ico? Uh, not really. I mean, it's personal between two people, and you know, I'm one of them. So. Uh, you know, like I said before, this has been going on for years and years now and, you know, from having to personally call to get an entry of a 14-year-old into a tournament to, you know, trying to, you know, get down sanction fees just to run events here, I've gone through it all. And, uh, you know, it's very frustrating, obviously. Well, yes, sure. The reason itself for this discipline actually was, you know, all of that fear of the fix. Issues. Then do you believe that all the parties who were involved in that whole saga should have been given a certain action mark? No, to start off, you know, as you see in the emails that I've circulated today, we started this process at the beginning of the year. I mean, Rohan and me decided last year that we're going to team up together for one reason and one reason only, and we started the process. I mean, a, a responsible and you know noteworthy federation would have taken the bull by the horns and at least had some kind of two-way communication uh, you know with the fact that we have so many options of going to the Olympics and at least discuss it with us I mean the way they treated it the way they handled it you know two weeks before starting to bulldoze their muscle was first of all uh, there was no need for that I mean all uh, the federation had to do in January was to say to us is sorry but the top player is going to get his pick you know, then what can we do? That's what they did in Austria. They had three players in the top 20 and the Austrian Federation made it clear to all three of them at the end on June 10th, the top guy is going to get his pick. But these guys, you know, are just, uh, uh, you know, there's lack of communication, lack of being proactive. And, you know, like I said, it's not only me, but, you know, you guys are here because, you know, I've won 12 Grand Slams and you're willing to hear what I have to say. But can you imagine the kids who, you know, don't get this platform to speak? So it's just frustrating all around. But you know, growing up myself as a kid, you know, I learned about uh, you know the frustration that Vijay Amritraj went through with the Federation, how he fought them, and then in '93 when Leander and Ramesh took on the Federation in the, in the before the semi-final of Davis Cup, and you know it's it's been going on for 45 years, and there's still the same people running the Federation. So I don't know what's going on here. Obviously, the structure is so watertight that nobody can do anything about it. But uh, you know the sad news is for Indian tennis, we no, no, nothing will get better for us ever if nothing is done. Yeah, he's not to blame. I mean, he's uh, you know he's doing his part as a professional tennis player, and he wants to do the best he can for himself. But you know, uh, I think uh, it's no secret that uh, uh, who the right choice would have been for the mixed doubles uh, 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 entry into the Olympics. Forget about the past. Based on we had won the French Open literally two weeks before the deadline, but you know, two uh, two days after I won the French Open, I was point blank told by the ITA, "Sorry, but you guys are not the obvious choice. We'll have to see how we'll do at Wimbledon." You know, so you know, there's a limit to how much I can do. And uh, you know, when I heard that, I, I knew my back was against the wall, and all I had to uh, pray for was that I was able to get a chance to go to the Olympics. Oh, Manish, uh, just adding. Well, I don't know what the problem is. I don't think he's a bad person. I don't know him well enough to really judge him like that. But, you know, if anybody, I'm very passionate about tennis. You know, like I said, tennis has given me everything I have in life today. And if someone is going to be the custodian for that sport in my country and he's not going to deliver time and time again or actually deliver at any level, you know, I am going to get very upset about it. And like I said, because I have the platform, I'm going to talk about it. You know, Anil, I think, has a problem with the fact that I have been able to access, you know, different avenues to do various things for sport. And, you know, I'm quasi doing what he should be doing. 
uh, you know, developing talent, promoting tennis, opening academies. But, uh, you know, believe it or not, multiple times through my career, I've gone to Anil Khanna and extended a hand saying that, you know, let's do things together. But he always wanted control and he never wanted, uh, you know, to show that he was uh, probably joining hands with the players. So, you know, that never worked out. And, you know, unfortunately, I had to deal with all this.